Okay. Yeah. So in the last section, like last session, like what we saw is like so we saw some of those details like um, the basic architecture. Like so, what is like the Kubernetes architecture is. Um, so it is basically like we'll have the master nodes and then uh, we'll have like all this uh, slave nodes. Like we, we are not supposed to call them slave anymore. So so these are like um, worker nodes. OK, and this is the master node. So the master node, it contains like API and then a scheduler and ETCD. So API like any commands like which we issue to the Kubernetes. So we issue them via this API. And then so the API, so it actually in turn it communicates with this kubelet, like so which is present on the child nodes, like worker nodes. And this kubelet is actually responsible for creating all these containers, like so using the runtime, like you'll have uh, the Docker runtime, like or or any any other runtimes, like okay. So using like the, it's the responsibility of the kubelet and the API to create all this all these containers, okay. Uh, basically like etcd so it is actually responsible for it's just like the brain of this particular kubernetes cluster so we have like if we want to create like three replicas of a nginx server so and if one dies so kubernetes will actually create another but another container like on the fly like immediately and how does it actually know so it actually knows so it tries to get this information from the etcd so etcd actually stores like the actual uh, the state and then the desired state like actual state is nothing but like so the desired state like we pass it via these AML files and then the actual state like this is a state like of the current the current state of this Kubernetes cluster. Okay. So this is the basic architecture of uh, Kubernetes. Okay. So and we also when we are actually dealing with Docker, so most of the time like we are actually talking about these containers. So basically like in Docker's like we speak mostly about these images, Docker images and then containers. So basically even here like Kubernetes, like if we use Docker as a runtime, then the containers are the most basic parts, but we don't actually interact with these containers directly. Like we don't create these containers or something like that directly. Like so there is an abstraction on top of this containers and this is the abstraction that is actually follow. So this is the abstraction. So usually like you have a container created and then on top of this container. So pod is an abstraction and pod is actually we have some something called as replica set and then deployments. So the replica set it is actually responsible for creating the number of replicas. OK, so for example, if I wanted to create like three instances of uh, three instances of Nginx. So what I do like I simply specify replicas count as three. OK, so it is the responsibility of replica set to actually manage this. OK, so create like three instances of these replication, these Nginx servers. OK, and on top of it, like we have something called as a deployment. OK, so in a way like we don't directly interact with the container anymore. Like OK, so it is the pod which is the first level of abstraction and uh, Again, like on top of it, like we have something called as replica sets and then deployments. Now we'll see like each of these, like so what is a pod? Like containers, we already know about them. So we learned about containers like in the Docker sessions in the past sessions. So now let's see like uh, what is a pod replica set and then that deployment. So as I mentioned, like in Kubernetes, the basic building block of a Kubernetes is something like a pod. OK, so it's an abstraction on top of container. OK. So whenever like we are actually talking about like a container, uh, so we don't directly deal with containers in Kubernetes. So it is generally pod, which is a basic building block. Okay. So a pod can have like multiple containers. So you can create like multiple containers. You can group together like multiple containers in a pod, but ideally like it is a one to one relationship which is suggested like so it is always better to have like one pod created for one container. Okay. So for example, like you have MongoDB and then MongoDB Express, OK? So ideally, like we can actually create both MongoDB and MongoDB Express in the same pod, OK? But it is not actually suggested. Like, so you need to create like one pod for MongoDB and one pod, pod for MongoDB Express, OK? So this is the basic abstraction of a container, OK? So where does this container and then deployment pod actually come into picture in this architecture? Like we saw this architecture, right? So this is the architecture like which we wrote. 
OK, so here like you can see actually. So inside this pod like you'll have so I'm just mentioning these as uh, pods, right? So each pod can have like multiple containers or a single container. So ideally it is suggested to have like one container associated with a pod. OK, and all these pods they sit to they are actually present in a node. OK, so node is just like an EC2 instance or a VM kind of thing. And then so inside node like inside a worker node like you'll have uh, the kubelet and then a container runtime. And using this kubelet like API, all the commands like which we send to the API, like these commands are actually communicated to the kubelet, which is actually responsible for creating these pods using the container runtime inside a node. So this is one node and in this node like I can have like multiple pods. OK, and each pod can in turn have like multiple containers. So, any questions here? So each node can have only a single pod. No, so each pod can have, I mean, each node can have like multiple pods. OK, and each pod can again have like multiple mm -hmm. uh, containers. OK, but ideally uh, it is actually recommended to have like one container in a pod and also the recommendation like in production environments like so it is suggested to have like one pod in a node kind of thing. OK. So that, that is for the high availability. So for example, like if I know, so there is a chance of a node getting deleted, right? So if a node gets deleted, we don't close like all the data. So that is the reason why. Like. So for example, let's say like I have Nginx. I wanted to create an Nginx. Uh, I mean, I want to deploy my code via Nginx and I have only single node. I decided to have only single node, okay? So what I do, so I'll just uh, create a pod. I'll have this pod the specification and then I'll say like I wanted to have like three replicas. Like I wanted to create like three replicas of this particular Nginx. So how many nodes are participating in my cluster like uh, Kubernetes cluster? I have only single node participating in my cluster. Let's assume, OK? So what does Kubernetes actually does? So the scheduler, what it does is like so it actually. OK, so since there is only one node, and in in the specification, like we we gave like we wanted to have like three instances, three pods running, right, of the same Nginx. So what it does, obviously, it doesn't have any choice. Like in the same node, it will create all these three Nginx pods. Okay. So this is actually fine, but what's the problem here? Is, uh, the problem here is like so th in development environments and in local environments, like this is actually fine, but when you go to the production, there is a high chances of failure like so for example like if this node fails obviously like all your your entire application is actually down right so which is not acceptable so that is the reason why like for high availability like we create like we'll have like multiple nodes created multiple nodes and then uh, these pods are actually distributed among like multiple nodes okay is it clear Prizi? yeah yes okay so this is all about like pods and then how they're actually deployed like. Okay, so if we want to achieve the same kind of thing like so with uh, Docker, so you might have actually tried this particular thing, right? So EKS like uh, last not EKS like ECS elastic container service. So how difficult it is like so you need to actually replicate like you need to create po uh, these instances and then uh, all these things, right? So. And even if a container like so if one pod, if one container dies, so obviously like in Kubernetes, like it is actually the replica set is actually taking care of creating like another container, like the failed container is actually recreated. But in Docker, like you need to actually track it and then uh, manually track it and then so you need to uh, basically like create another instance of that container. So you might ask me like, so is it always the manual thing like in Docker? Uh, there might be some tools like so docker might have like some extra tools or third party tools which actually takes care of uh, creating these uh, containers or something like that but with kubernetes it's an open source tool and you are getting all this packaged together right so that's the advantage of kubernetes okay so clear about this architecture right Now let's see like uh, as I mentioned like so some the ba basic building blocks of a um, Kubernetes are like pod and then replica set and then the deployment right. 
containers. So we don't directly create these containers in Kubernetes, like so just like how we created it in Docker. So we actually like Kubernetes itself will take care of creating these containers and starting these containers. OK. So which screen you are actually seeing right now? So you are seeing this PPT, right? Yes. Yeah. OK. Uh, so first let's create a pod. OK, so let's try to create a pod. So I have the code. Uh, yeah, uh, before actually creating the pod, like I would like to go through few slides. Just, just ignore this. No, OK. So basically like uh, what I mentioned here, like so in this particular. Yeah, so here like we saw the pod is like a basic abstraction, right? On top of a container and then we have replica sets and then deployments. OK, so first let's see like what a pod is actually. So in the previous session, like when we actually discussed about this particular thing, like uh, the Kubernetes uh, AML file, like a template file. So what we discussed about it, like so we saw like uh, there are like few mandatory things like which we need to pass. The first thing is like API version. So which version? So this is common across all these uh, Kubernetes AML files. Like so whatever object you are actually trying to create, so some of these architecture, like some of these items are actually mandatory. Okay. So one among them is like API version. So what is this API version actually? Like so basically, like I was actually mentioning, right? So in the Kubernetes, like we actually communicate with the master node. Like so we don't actually create these pods and then clusters, all these things on directly, right? So we interact with something called as kubectl, and kubectl is just like a command line utility. And so when we issue a command with the issue a command to this kubectl like so here like i just wanted to specify this i wanted to create this pod okay so what i do like i issue like so kubectl uh, apply minus f and then the file name i'll give so in turn like kubectl will actually call this api kubernetes api and this communicates with kubectl okay so as I mentioned, like so, this is an API, right? So there are like different versions of uh, Kubernetes IP APIs that are actually possible, right? So that is the reason why, like API version. So you need to specify like which version of the API like you are trying to make use of. So for example, like if you are using like an older version of um, API, so which doesn't support like some of these properties or some of these uh, items, so you'll get an error, right? Obviously, like so that is the reason why like this is a mandatory thing like API version you need to specify. The next important thing is like kind. So kind is nothing but like what type of object like Kubernetes object like you are trying to create. So in this case, like I'm trying to create a pod. So if I wanted to create a deployment, OK. Um, so if I want to create a deployment, so obviously like my kind will be deployment. Uh, so if I wanted to create services, like I need to um, specify my kind as service. OK, uh, so along with this, like you'll have multiple things like you have stateful set, replica set, and uh, uh, you have like volumes, like persistent volume claims. So in Docker, like we used to have these volumes, right? So the same way like Kubernetes also has like volumes. Uh, so all these are actually managed via these AML files, like so the services, network related services, and then uh, uh, all these pods, deployments, and everything like so they're actually managed via this AML files. So this is one way of managing these Kubernetes objects. So you can also communicate with the API via RESTful service. But one way is to issue these AML files. OK, so the kind this is another important one, like and then required field, which actually which is used to identify what type of object like I'm trying to create. Like. So the next most important thing is like metadata. <coughs> So what this metadata holds is like so this metadata is actually useful for creating uh, so identifying resources. So for example, like I'm just creating this particular metadata. So I'm just creating a pod with the name Nginx, and then uh, the label of this particular pod is like uh, Nginx pod. Okay. Um, so once we start looking at other aspects, like so 
as I mentioned, like so pod is the basic building block, so you'll not see like so how where exactly these names and then labels are actually useful. Uh, but these labels are actually useful for identifying like so for example, like I'm trying to create a volume. OK, so it is just another AML file. So if I want to attach this particular volume to this particular pod, so how do I do? So I actually need to use this labels. OK, so using this label, so I need to identify this particular pod and then uh, so I need to attach this. OK, I'll also show that like so how these labels are actually useful and all that stuff. So this is the metadata. Another thing which is important is like spec. OK, so a spec is nothing but like it is a specification like in this specification like what we are actually trying to achieve is like so we wanted to specify like what we wanted to do. So API is like which version of the API wanted to call kind with to identify like uh, what needs to be created. So metadata, which is obviously like contains names, labels and all that stuff like and the specification, it contains the actual requirement like so what is this part for? This pod is used for creating an Nginx container. So which con which version of the image I wanted to use? So I wanted to use like Nginx like 1.14.2. 1. Okay, so this is the version like which I wanted to use. So I wanted to expose say that like uh, this is my container port. Okay, so this is my container port. So you can also specify env values like environment values. So for example, like if I have a SQL server. So I need to pass this username, password, and then uh, any environment variables, right? So you can actually pass them. So something like environment and ENVs. Okay, so you can pass something like this. Or you can also pass these ENVs from external files, like ENV files. So what is the basic structure of an uh, Kubernetes object? Like what are all the required components? API version, kind, metadata, and then the spec. Okay. Spec actually deals with the actual requirement. Like, so in this case, like I wanted to create an Nginx image 1.14.2. Okay, so now let me try to apply this particular. So the command for applying like any Kubernetes. Um, so as I mentioned, like you will interact with Kubernetes via the kubectl. Um, so you can also interact with APIs and then uh, so there, are, there is a dashboard which is actually supported. Uh, also, you 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 can ha you have like third party tools like, but basically like uh, we use like kubectl for interacting with Kubernetes. Most predominantly used one. So the command for applying this particular AML file is kubectl minus F. So I am specifying like the file minus F apply. And then so my file name is pod pod dot yml. Okay, so cube city and apply. So you can see the response of this particular command is pod and then it's created. Okay. So now let's see. Like so this is the command, right? So the pod is actually created. So how do I actually see these details like pod details? So in Docker, like it is some this is almost similar to Docker run or Docker run, right? So you are creating a pod out of this particular ML file. Uh, so how do I actually see all this content? Like so you have something called as like kubectl get. So Kubernetes, like as I mentioned, like so there are like multiple services, like so there are like there are services like um, uh, ports, deployments, services, replica sets, okay, ports, deployment services, replica sets, uh, and uh, environment files, I think. A secrets, it is secrets. Okay. Uh, secrets persistent volume claims. So you have like uh, many more items, like so some of the predominantly used ones. Okay. So these are like different types that are actually available in Kubernetes. So 
if you want to see like any of these types, like so what you need to do is like, so you can just specify kubectl get, and then if I wanted to see like pods, so I can simply issue like pods. Okay, so this is the command like kubectl get pods. So if I wanted to see deployments, So deployment. So right now I don't have any deployments. So that is why it is like it is saying like no resources found in default namespace. And then kubectl get parts. So right now, like I'm interested in this kubectl get parts. So you have another option called as like describe. Okay. Kubectl describe. So kubectl describe. So what type you wanted to describe? So here, like I'm I am interested in describing this particular pod, right? So I'm describing kubectl describe pod. So if you are trying to describe a deployment, like it could be like deployment, right? But right now it is pod. Pod, and then the name of this object, like type. So I'm looking at nginx. So you can actually see all this information, kubectl describe pod. So when you look at this pod, so you can actually see so the name it is this in the next uh, pod so default namespace so you have uh, namespaces like uh, there is an option to create like namespaces so the namespaces concept is almost similar to uh, .net namespaces and then java namespaces like so to separate uh, different types of uh, resources okay by default right, right now i'm not using any namespaces i am using the default namespace okay um, so this is a node uh, on which node like this is actually created. So since I'm using like Docker desktop, so this is my node. And you can see these labels. So in the next pod, so where did I get this pod? Like in the next pod. So this is the label like which I applied. If you see, okay. So this is my pod AML, and then this is a label. Uh, you can also see some other. Uh, um, label so this is because like i have a service mesh installed uh, which is uh, something we talk later okay just ignore this anything related to istio just ignore them okay okay so annotations so you'll see all these annotations and then uh, ip address of this pod so containers related information like so inside as i mentioned like so a pod is just an abstraction on top of uh, the container right so now you can actually see this container related information the container id ports what are all the ports that are exposed so you can also see uh, the status like so how it actually started. Uh, ignore this Istio related stuff. So started this container nginx, created this container nginx. Okay. So it is taking like container image is already present. Like so, I already have this container in the next right. So it is just using this same container with same image which is present on my machine. After that, like it created the container. So after that, like it went into the started state. Okay. So this is the basics of a pod, like, okay. So any questions? So for the command kubectl get pods, uh, hmm. we have an output, right? So there uh, I can see like uh, below the ready, it is two by two pods. Hmm. Like yeah. Yeah. So ideally, like as I mentioned, like my pod, a single pod, a node can have like multiple pods, and each pod can have like multiple containers running, right? If you remember. Okay. Yes. So, but ideally, like each pod, it should be like one by one. Okay. So each pod should be associated with only one particular container. Okay. So here. Uh, you if you run this particular same command like kubectl apply pods minus f so you will see like one by one okay so out of one container like this pod has okay one container and out of this one container it is ready state okay one is ready state so in my case like you are seeing two by two this is because so i was actually working on something else called as like istio like istio is a service mess so 
if you as I mentioned, like so each pod, it is only meant for running like it is not meant for running only one container, but ideally like so you should have like one container like it is a suggested one in a pod. So if you have like multiple containers running in a same pod, so it is something called as like sidecar pattern. OK, so we'll discuss about this later, like when we start working on uh, service meshes, but it is called as like sidecar pattern. So if you are running like more than one container in a pod, so it is called as like sidecar pattern. Uh, so in my case, like what uh, this Istio does is like, so it is used for tracing and then uh, all this purposes, like so logging, tracing and uh, uh, metric collection, all that information. Okay. So, so what we run that YAML file and this command, it should be one by one. Yeah, in your case, it will be one by one. But in my case, so since I started, like I have this Istio installed on my laptop like so it is actually like injecting this sidecar like so it is you saw this right so when i did like describe pods so you saw few containers related to istio yes okay so they are getting injected okay so but in your case so it should be like one by one that is nothing but the containers running yeah so the number of containers running and then uh, so the a's and then uh, restarts like so restarts are nothing but like uh, so for example like um, so restarts are ideally something like this so for example like we we were so seeing this right mongodb and then mongodb express case so sometimes like this mongodb express so mongo express what is happening like it is getting started before even this mongodb started completely right yes so in those cases, like so, what we did, like so, we gave like we gave something like uh, in Docker Compose uh, restart always. Depends. Yeah, depends. Even in case of depends, so it is actually failing. Like in some cases, like worst case scenarios. Okay. So that is where like so we came up with this health checks. So if you remember, like so, I was actually doing like a health check condition. Um, so yeah, the health check. If you remember. So only when this MongoDB health check is passed, so then only I'm starting this MongoDB Express. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you can do all those things, like so you can pass this uh, container startup commands, like or any of these things, even here. Okay. Yeah. So this should be ideally one by one in your case. Yeah. So this is the basic component of a of the Kubernetes, like which is pod. Now. Now let's see like how do we actually so we we were actually seeing this like so with docker like if you are if, if you are using like plain docker so and if you want to replicate like so if I want if you wanted to so for example like usually like in your production deployments what we do so you'll deploy your code onto multiple machines like you'll have multiple web servers multiple API servers right the same code is actually deployed onto multiple servers okay and it is load balanced so here like what we discussed like one of the advantages with kubernetes is like so the replication is very easy so then how do we actually replicate this okay so how we are actually replicating this so this is the pod so and in this case like so in the pod definition i cannot actually specify something like so i need to i wanted to run like three instances of uh, this nginx container right so i cannot actually do that here okay with the pod definition so this is where like other components uh, like replica set and then uh, replica set and then th these come into picture like uh, okay so this is where like so we saw container and then pod right and this is like if you want so ideally like when we are going with kubernetes so our intention is to create like multiple pods and then our intention is to make use of this replication option right so if we wanted to go with like single container, so then obviously like we can go with. So then we can actually go directly with the Docker itself, OK? But since we wanted to make use of these replica sets and all this stuff replicas, so we are going with the uh, Kubernetes, OK? So ideally, so even a pod is just like an abstraction on top of a container. So ideal recommendation is that like so we don't actually use this pod on a regular basis like so you don't actually create all these containers or pods directly via this pod.aml okay so this is again like a low level thing pod.aml file okay so in real time scenarios like what we try to do is like so we try to create these pods via deployments okay so 
deployments is just like something which manages these replica sets and then these replica sets in turn manages these pods. OK, so creation of a pod via this AML file, like via this kind like pod kind. OK, so this is actually suggested like so this is actually suggested only in the development environment, like when you are trying to quickly test something like so if you wanted to create uh, this Nginx container like on it very quickly and test something. So that is when like it is suggested to you are suggested to make use of these parts like but in real time scenarios like in, in production environments like we don't actually create uh, all these uh, containers and then pods via this pod dot ml file. OK, so that's clear, right? OK, so then how do we actually create these parts like so what's the other way to create these parts? So another way to create these parts is something called as like deployments. OK, so here you can see and this is the definition for a deployment. OK, so this is the AML file for deployment. So what's the version like I'm using? Like I'm using this V1 version, apps v V1 version. OK, and you have something called as. Uh, So what is the kind? So I'm just specifying like so if you see this particular error message like previously I used to have something called as like apps slash V1. So this is the API version. So with this API version, so I'm not actually getting any issue. Whereas like. Uh, whereas like if I remove this apps dot V1 version, so I'm just pointing to this V1 API version. So you can actually see this API version or kind does not reference a schema known by the cloud code. OK, please ensure you are using valid API version and kind. OK, so it is actually complaining like so basically like so there is some issue like so this is not the right API right API version for creating these deployments. OK. So this is the API like which I wanted to make use. Like I need I'm supposed to make use. And the kind is so I'm trying to create a deployment. OK, so this is the deployment which I'm trying to create. Uh, again, like as I mentioned, like every Kubernetes AML file, so it has like API version kind metadata and then spec. OK, so this is a spec. So API version to identify like which version of this API is like we wanted to use kind. So what type of object like we are trying to create metadata. So to identify this particular resource. And then spec like this contains our all our specifications. OK. So in this specifications like if you see. Let's actually minimize this and you can actually see this information all this information. So we have something called as like selector and then uh, the replicas and then the template. OK. So usually like uh, the selector, OK? So as I mentioned, like so deployment is something like it is an abstract. It is uh, deployment is something like which manages in pod, right? So deployment is the one like which is actually managing the pod. Uh, pod is actually an abstraction on top of a container, right? So when I say like so deployment is actually managing a pod, so there should be like it is one component and it is another component. So in a way like what I'm actually doing is like using these deployment deployment kind. So I'm creating pods. OK, so. I'm creating pods, so in in a way like I'm supposed to create a relationship between these two. So the deployment and then the pod, right? So how am I creating this pod like so? In the spec, what I'm saying is like I'm trying to say e selector. Like selector is another important component, like which we predominantly see across uh, multiple AML files. So in this selector, what we are actually specifying is so go and fetch all those pods which are actually managing, ma which are actually matching this label. Okay. So I have in the spec like. Uh, I'm saying like the first instruction which I'm giving to Kubernetes is like so go and fetch all this like so this particular deployment is supposed to be applied to all the pods like which has this one label like OK. Which has like this label Nginx OK. So where do I actually specify this Nginx label OK? So and another thing like which I'm actually specifying like replicas. 
so i'm saying like i wanted to create like five replicas okay so i wanted to create like five replicas of my pod so if you are actually going with this pod kind so you cannot actually specify the replicas like so so that is the reason why like you need to go with either a replica set or deployment okay so what i'm saying like so here i'm saying like i wanted to create like five copies of my nginx okay and then so i need to specify right so i'm not actually referring to this pod anymore like i need to specify like my pod definition so in this deployment like i initially i said to this i what i mentioned is like so using this selector like so using this label so go and collect all those uh, pods which has this label and then apply this deployment okay right uh, so i should actually have this template right so i should also create this uh, specify this what is a container and then which image i wanted to use and then so inside this image like which port i wanted to use and all this stuff okay so that is where this template actually comes okay so what this template actually contains is so this is actually a pod template so if you see so template so this actually uh, describes the pods that will be created so this is actually a pod template spec okay so ideally like what we are actually doing is like so whatever like we have here like except this api version and then kind so we we are just taking all this information okay so you are taking this information and then you are actually creating it as a template okay so you can see like so metadata labels and then inside this template like you get again like you have a spec so this is nothing but like the pod template okay so pod template again like if you take this pod template a pod template has api version kind metadata spec since here like it is not required to specify this api version and kind so you just need to specify this metadata and then spec okay so what are all the important things like in this particular deployment so you have api version kind metadata so which is common across all these template files like whether you are creating pod deployment services replicas or secrets anything like whatever object like you are creating in kubernetes kubernetes like so these are common like api version kind metadata and then spec okay so this spec actually differs for each of these items like okay so for pod i directly gave this spec like so the container and all these things like so whereas for deployment what i'm saying is like initially using this template like using this pod template create pods and how many pods i wanted to create like i wanted to create like five instances of these pods so this is where i'm using replicas and then so i need to tag like so my deployment so it needs to know right so which pods are supposed to be associated group uh, associated with this deployment okay so this is where like selectors come into picture so using the selector i'm just saying this okay now let's see execute so this is clear right or any questions here pawan uh, yes yeah. pods can have same name uh, so yeah pods can have the same name uh, but ideally like so kubernetes what it does is like so it will actually create like so basically like it will add some extra hash so it's like name so i wanted to give in genix so, so just to differentiate different things so let's uh, just delete uh, ctl pods so i have one pod running right so i'll just delete this pod cube ctl delete pod so this is one way of deleting the pod like so you can any resource like so cube ctl delete and then uh, the type like so whether it is pod or volume or it is like deployment so you need to specify this and then the name of this particular uh, object okay uh, another way is something like this so we create this pod again so another way to delete uh, resources is something like this so you just like so i created this right okay. so my pod is created 
okay so cube ctl uh, delete minus f and i can specify the file name okay so even you can create delete resources all these resources like something like this so when this is actually useful is so for example like i can have like multiple replicas like so i can just do something like this So in the same file, like you can actually have like multiple types which are actually created. Okay. So this way, like you can actually create like multiple resources. Like you can all actually combine these things, like create pod. You can create deployment services volumes in a single file, or you can also create like multiple files, individual files. Okay. So this way, like uh, if you just do like kubectl delete minus f, and then if you provide this AML file, so all the resources that are actually present in this file they gets created. Okay. So these are the two different options to delete any resources. So this is okay. Yeah, now let me try to create this deployment. So just just to show you how this particular selector and then uh, how this particular template is actually working like pod template. So what I will try to do is like so I'll just change this name. Okay. Or like I, I'll, I'll just execute this so. CTL apply minus F, and then I am just executing like this deployment sort AML file. So you can see like this is actually created. Now, so if you want to see the deployments, so what's the command? kubectl get deployment deployments. So I have like one deployment, and if you see this. So I have like five replicas and all this out of this five replicas all are up to date and are are so they are of like 17 seconds. There is something like this. Okay. So you can actually describe this particular deployment. Kubectl describe deployment in the next okay. So you can actually see the namespace is default namespace. Um, so this is the replica set like which got created. So as I was actually mentioning, so deployment is something like which manages the replica set and replica set is something like uh, which manages a pod. Okay. And it is like scaling replica set. We'll we'll see about these things like in later. Like okay. So this is the basic description of a deployment. Now, if you want to see uh, the pods that were created, kubectl get pods. So you can actually see. So in the next deployment, these are the pods like which got created. Okay. So how many? One, two, three, four, five. So I specified like five, and then five got created. Um, so I can also again describe this information, and then you can actually see these details. So let's say so after this, like what I decided to do is like uh, all of a sudden, like I realized like there is a spike in my there is a spike. Okay, so people started using my application, more number of people. Okay. So I wanted to increase like another five items. Like uh, I want to replicate another five instances, like start another five instances. So what I can actually do is like, so I can simply go here into the deployment file and then I can simply say total 10. So now I wanted to have like 10 instances of this in the next container running. And again, like the same command cube CTL apply minus F deployment. Okay. So you can see get pods. So you can see the pod is initializing. This is initializing and this is already in running state in it in different states. 
Okay, so all the parts are in running state. You can see like this part, it got started like two minutes back and then uh, this one like two minutes back on two, three, four, five. These five parts like they are created almost like uh, three minutes back, okay? And these they are created just now. One, two, three, four, five, okay? So this way, like without actually impacting like any existing, uh, any running code, like you can actually scale your system like up and down, okay? So now if I decided like, okay, now I decided like my, the cricket match is over and then so none of us, none of the people are actually using the system. Like, okay, only few people like who are interested in watching highlights, so they are using the system. Okay. So now I can actually reduce this back. Again, like QCTL apply. Okay, so get parts. You can see one, two, three, four, five. These five are getting terminated, right? So now we have only five instances. Five, one, two, three, four, five, five parts back. So if I do like again, like execute this without making any changes, so it just says that like it is unchanged, like the deployment file is actually unchanged. Okay, so this is more about like replicas. So kubectl get deployments. So I'll just delete this deployment. So commands kubectl delete deployment. This one, okay. So the deployment, it gets deleted. So once, once this deployment is actually deleted, all these parts also they get deleted like they are also terminating you can see so if you are creating parts like individually then it is actually a, a painful process like so these are not actually managed by a deployment and then you need to go and kill each of these parts okay so that is the reason why like we tag we try to tag this uh, parts creation to the deployment so though the pod is actually the basic abstraction of a container, so we don't create these pods directly. Like so, we use this replica set or deployments. Most of the times, like 99% of the time, like we try to use this deployment itself. Like so, even we don't prefer to use like replica sets. Okay. So this is more about like replica deployments. So get deployments. There are no deployments. So now uh, let's try to do a small fun activity. So what I wanted to do is like, so this is my deployment, right? So I wanted to change the selector label, okay? So I just wanted to change the selector label to Nginx1, okay? And I didn't actually change my label, like pod label to, this is still pointing to Nginx, okay? So I just changed the selector label to Nginx1. So kubectl apply minus subtractor. So you can actually see the deployment Nginx deployment is invalid. This is because the spec template metadata labels invalid value like map app Nginx selector does not match the template labels. Okay, so the template label it is not actually matching with this particular label. Okay, so let me rename also change this particular templates uh, label. So you can see the deployment got created. So ideally, like in a way, like how this is actually working. So as per the basic um, structure of an ML file, like Kubernetes ML file, like you'll have API version kind and then uh, the metadata and then the spec. So inside the spec, like for this deployment, like what we are doing is like, so we are providing this particular template. So for deployments like template is a required thing okay so without template like you cannot actually create a deployment so there is nothing there is no way like you will create a pod and then uh, so you can you are trying to associate uh, that particular pod with the deployment at the runtime so that is not quite possible so you need to create these templates like okay so the template file is nothing but like it is a pod template okay so this pod template uh, we are just specifying in the template and then I'm saying like, so use this selector to identify this pod and then the replicas, like how many replicas I wanted to have. Okay, so any questions? So 
So this is my replica set, right? So you can also see this rolling out strategy, right? Um, so something like cube CTL rollout status. So if you are actually ex if you execute this command, like so, let's say like I have a hundred instances of okay. Uh, so I wanted to create like hundred instances, like fifty instances. I wanted to. So what I do? So I'll just apply this kubectl apply, and you can see this rollout status. So in the rollout status, you can see waiting for the deployment rollout to finish. Five out of fifty updated replicas are available. So you can just check like how many replicas are actually up and running. All this information. Okay. So this is just like one way. So you can see like six, seven, eight, nine, ten. OK, so you see this, right? So all the deployment uh, successfully rolled out. So this is the command like kubectl rollout status and then deployment slash name of the deployment. OK. So let's see like pods, get pods. So you can see like some of them were created like just now, like some were created like four minutes back. So if you want to see like uh, so if you see this particular thing in the next like describe this part cube CTL describe part so you can see these labels so that you can see the label is like in the next one right. So if you want to search like so in this case, like if you have like multiple deployments and then multiple pods, so making use of like kubectl get pods, so it will actually show you pods from all the deployments. OK, so this is like a global command kubectl get pods. So if you have like hundreds of deployments and if you use this particular get pods, so you'll get pods that were created by all these hundred deployments. OK. So in this case, like if you want to filter, like if you wanted to filter only specific parts with uh, some label or something like that. So what you can actually do is like so you can use like kubectl get parts minus l equal to the app, the command which I mean, so the label which we used is like. In the next one, right? So you can see, so this will actually written all these in the next ones. So if it changes to some other label, so there are no resources with that label. OK. No. So is it clear like the deployments part? Any questions? If you want to add a new pod in between this deployment, we'll have a new selector. Uh, so new pod in the sense like so new pod of the same type. No different type. Okay, so if you want to use something like let's try that. Okay. So it is something like so you wanted to create like a new pod of different type. So ideally like uh, so it is suggested to have like one pod type. So which is associated with one deployment, but let's see like so whether it is actually how we can actually do that. So I think like it is actually possible, like uh, only like one deployment associated with uh, single pod types. Okay, so 
so this template like so this is not an array template kind of thing okay so you cannot have like multiple pod templates like created in one deployment but pavan so using the triplica so you can create uh, pods right in multiple pods yeah so same here, like, so her intention is something like this so what preeti is yeah, asking yeah. Like, uh, so she wanted to create like so here like i'm creating nginx pod right she with the same right. deployment like she also wanted to create another pod, another pod which is of type like or uh, sql server or it is like a java image or something like that okay so then that is right they have to create another file right deployment. yeah so another deployment or you can actually <coughs> create something like this mm. um, so you can use like three oops okay De this is again deployment and this is like node deployment so i'll just produce this so far. yeah node but deployment. images multiple images they can create right uh, so multiple images like so multiple containers you mean to say yeah so something like this so basically with the same deployment so you can uh, create yeah, two yeah. different uh, images and uh, uh, yeah. different uh, I'm, I'm just showing as well. this yeah, is okay. my node okay and then node so one point node version latest so i'll just use this latest latest tag okay and then even like this exposes like 80 port let's assume okay. so cube ctl get deployments so I'll delete this deployment or without even deleting, like we can apply this. Cube CTL apply minus F deployments. So this deployment is actually created and you can see like cube CTL apply parts. I mean not apply parts, get parts. So some of my instances are actually terminating. So why they're actually terminating? Because previously, if you see, like I used to have this 50 here, like, but in this, in this, uh, when I'm applying this, so I change this to five. So all those other 45, they're actually getting terminated. So another thing like what we can actually see is like, so, initializing like so you can see like running terminating for initialize This is still in initializing phase and you can see like how many containers like pretty like so here like I give two different containers and one is from my Istio, right? So it is saying like it should start like three out of zero, like none of them actually got started. So let's try to see what is happening with this. Cube CTL uh, describe Pod. Okay, describe pod and then pod name. So if you see this in detail, so what it does, so proxy, this is NY proxy, Istio, Istio, just ignore this, anything related to NY and Ist, I mean Istio. So what it is doing, like it is trying to fetch like Nginx, so it is already present, created an Nginx container. And after that, like what it is doing, so it is pulling this node image. So it's still in the pulling phase. So 
Oh, that is a problem. like what happened in the next container in the next successfully pulled node image mm. started container node created container node successfully pulled node image so this is in another part like okay so you can see like so with multiple so pretty like so if you wanted to create like so this is in this case like what is happening so you have a single pod and in this pod like you have like multiple containers like so one is like node container and the other one is like in the next container so it is failing uh, why is this failing Yeah, so we'll see like why it is failing, but this is clear, right? So if you want to create like run multiple containers in a single pod, so you can actually specify this as an array. Like so this is actually an array uh, in AML declaration. So you can specify like multiple containers. OK, I think like I should change this port. So these are actually failing like we'll identify the root cause uh, but this is clear right so in one part like how to create like multiple containers so this is one thing and if you wanted to create like multiple pods in the same deployment that is not possible like so this is not accepting like an array okay so you can only pass like one pod template to a deployment okay so this is one way like if you wanted to achieve like so with the same AML file like if you wanted to create like multiple deployments so you can have something like this so you can create like multiple kubernetes resources separated by this thing like and then you'll have something called as uh, node deployment this is like node and this is node this is node my container name is node and I wanted to use like node latest. So I suspect on this port. I'm just trying to remove this port from this Nginx. I'm not sure like with Nginx is exposing this AT port on. Um, yeah not this and then it's like in node like i'm not providing this port option so now you can simply do like kubectl get deployments just see so you can see like so i have only one deployment okay and kubectl get pods okay so i have like only one pod i mean these are the pods so now let me do kubectl apply kubectl minus f and then deployment okay so you can see like in the next and then node deployments are actually created so we'll just do like kubectl get deployments so you'll see like so this is in the next deployment and this is like node deployment okay five out of five are ready and zero out of five are ready Okay, so you can also see like kubectl get pods. So my node pods are actually failing. So what might be the reason containers? So how do we actually deploy this node? What is this any requirement? So let me check these logs. Mm. 
Yeah. So, so this is the way like how we can actually create like multiple deployments. So not only deployments like you can have like deployment services, persistent volumes and other stuff like which is actually created like separated by these three dashes. OK. So to answer your question, Priti, like you cannot actually have like one deployment cannot have like multiple pod, different pod types. So any questions like any any questions? Uh, do we have any cheat sheet kind of thing similar to Docker? Okay, yeah, I'll I'll share that. Um, like, okay, so I'll share the cheat sheet. So when compared to Docker, like so these commands, these commands are mostly like you'll have like generic command like so kubectl get deployments, get pods, and all this stuff, deleting and creating resources. So it's mostly like the AML files like which we actually should deal with. So I think it's node server. It is actually it's not something like an Nginx server, right? Which runs in the background. So this is getting started and then stopped. So it is something like Docker run node. So I'll execute this PowerShell command. Docker. And again, like another interesting thing is like so if you're using like local version, like so if you have like Docker engine installed on your machine. So you can actually check something like this. So all this Kubernetes related containers, so you can also see them via this Docker PS. Okay. Docker run. This image. Okay, so Docker run node. So you can actually see so basic node image which we are actually taking. So it is just creating and then exiting. So that is because like this is not an Nginx server kind of thing, right? So you should actually run like if you remember like in our Docker sessions. So basically like you start this node server using like express.js or anything like that. So if you have like a plain node, so it is simply starting this particular node and then it doesn't have any task to do, right? So it is getting killed. So I could have taken like a better example here, like any other service, like so MongoDB or something like that. Okay, so, but you got the point, right? Here. Yeah. Okay. So also like another thing, like what we can actually see here is something like this. Yeah. So yeah, we'll cover other topics like tomorrow. Like so tomorrow we'll see replica sets and then we'll also see like stateful sets, like what are stateful sets and all that stuff. Like okay. So for today it is clear, right? Yeah. Okay then.